Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Kelly Chastanay and I am going to be your host for today's Digging Into the Process event. And today we are going to be talking about the very exciting topic of process mining. Joining me today will be Anant Gupta, who is Head of Digital Transformation and Cloud for Prolifics. We're going to be discussing a little bit about what is process mining, how it works, some of the impactful areas with it, and then we're going to get to the really interesting part of guaranteed outcomes. So, Anant, thank you for joining. Thank you, Kelly. Excited to be here. So we're seeing a lot of excitement right now from our clients, from our vendors, basically anybody that's involved with process improvement. And in fact, um, I recently attended a virtual process mining conference and I was amazed at the massive turnout and especially the international presence. It seems like this thing is spreading worldwide. So it's incredible, but can you tell us a little bit about who should be looking at process mining and, and why now? No, you're right. I mean, there is, there is a lot of excitement um, and, and rightly so uh, across the board. Uh, it's now catching up in the U.S. Uh, really, really hard. And uh, uh, we are seeing that in all our clients and vendors. But who should be interested? Um, you know, process mining at the heart of it is really all about a data-driven approach to process discovery. Right, so anybody who is responsible for any kind of process improvement initiatives, uh, operational excellence initiatives, improving or impacting any kind of business KPI, they should all be looking at process mining. I mean, so far they have been kind of looking at uh, how you know any KPI is impacted through a process discovery initiative, uh, but those initiatives are very, very long, very, very costly, uh, dare I say, inaccurate most of the time, right? So they're all now trying to see if process mining is the solution. And uh, we, we were seeing it absolutely is. Uh, it's a very, very important solution, uh, important aspect of the overall solution. Um, and uh, why now? I think that's again, you know, very interesting because uh, it's not a new topic. It's not a new discipline. It's been around for, I want to say a couple of decades now. Uh, it started getting commercially available in, in two lanes uh, around the 2006, 2007 timeframe. Uh, we did our first process mining initiative uh, about 10 years back. Um, so it's it's not new, uh, but I think um, because I think now the tooling has really come of age, first of all. Um, I think now because of the pandemic uh, situation and there's a lot of focus on cost, people really want to make sure that they are uh, taking cost out of their operations. Uh, they want to run lean. Uh, they want to do you know more with less. Um, there is a churn in the workforce. You know, we, they're not uh, doing work with the same people who have done it for 20 years. Uh, there are new people coming in. They want to see if, uh, you know, the process is being executed right. So there are a lot of different factors that this has gained steam over the last uh, last year or so. So you mentioned um, data-driven. So just if you could, let's talk a little bit about how it works specifically and how, from a data-driven perspective, this compares to traditional process improvement methods. Absolutely. So, you know, when, when we think of process, uh, what comes in our mind first is, you know, a nice uh, visual diagram or, uh, you know, something that is really beautifully painted. Uh, it has all the different arrows and uh, different kind of triangles, squares, and we think all of it is very, very structured and it is not the case. A lot of the process in organizations is, is quite unstructured. You know, people are just coming in uh, to the offices, opening their desktops and, uh, they start interacting with screens and systems. Um, and for those kind of processes, it's very tough to really understand exactly what is happening in the entire life cycle of the process. Uh, and that's where it, is, it becomes very, very painstaking effort uh, to really discover what is happening, how it happened, who did what, uh, did we adhere to the policies, all of that. So with process mining, it is, it is data driven because um, you know, people are really looking at every interaction that people have with the systems, it leaves a digital footprint, right? People are looking at those digital footprints, collecting those digital footprints and correlating them, uh, doing a time series analysis on those digital footprints to come up with a meaningful representation, a visual representation of what process got executed in reality, right? Not what you defined, not what you modeled, but how you executed it. So think of it as collection of digital footprints, analysis of the digital footprint, time series analysis of that, 
to visually represent what the process is. Now, beyond that visual representation, there is data behind it, right? Because you're seeing every particular transaction, how it went through. So we also talk about it as, you know, process by evidence. You know, it is an evidence-based or a data-based analysis of that. And that those two things are very, very powerful. You know what, I can <laughs> really appreciate what process mining can bring to the table. We have been, I know we've run into several clients that have gone through process improvement uh, opportunities, exercises. They define their process and then we go in and we try and help them with re-engineering to do some sort of improvement, only to find in the code and in the data that things actually were working a little bit differently than they thought they were. There were more variables going on. Um, and unfortunately that, you know, that slows things down in that re-engineering effort and you have to, to look at things a little bit differently. So I really appreciate the concept of using data. And you know, the, the whole exercise of, of manually discovering, it's very, very long, it's very costly, right? So people don't, uh, sometimes people give up midway. I mean, we have been in a lot of situations where, you know, people say oh, after eight months, we really haven't recognized anything. Uh, we haven't, we are not very further from where we were. Uh, we have a little bit more understanding. We are not sure if it is right or wrong. Uh, they get different views from different stakeholders, uh, you know, based on their opinions, their biases. So it's not scientific and process mining really makes it very, very scientific and very accurate. I know Prolifix has always been a big advocate of understanding the as is process, right? Exactly what's going on today in order to understand um, what the future could be. But your point is, is that it takes a long time and, you know, and there's no guarantee, right? You want to be able to understand what's going to come out of this investment in this process re-improvement. So I think that's the perfect segue, Anant, to this concept of guaranteed outcomes. When your team first started talking to us about it, I was pretty excited and I know my clients were as well. So if you would, go ahead and elaborate a little bit on what we mean when we say guaranteed outcomes in process mining. Absolutely, because that's, that's the most appealing part, at least to me, uh, the whole concept of guaranteed outcomes. And I want to say that, you know, there are, there are two levels of guarantee, right? One, we are saying that we are going to automate uh, the process of process discovery itself, uh, which is, like I said, very painstaking part uh, of doing it manually. So we are saying that in, in, a, in four to six week time frame, we are going to do this process discovery for you because we are automating it instead of six months. Uh, so that's one guarantee that we are making that it's going to be a quick, very cost effective way of actually doing the process discovery. Once we have done the process discovery, the guarantee is around the outcomes, the, around the benefits that we are going to get once we start making improvements in your in your processes, right? So it is all about identifying the opportunities for improvement. Um, and we put a guarantee behind it because the business benefits are very, very tangible with the data that is that is behind all, all of this exercise. So if I if I were to take an example, um, you know, we actually went to a large financial services organization and they had a massive issue around service onboarding. So if they were to set up a new service for their clients uh, in their cash management division, sometimes it would take months. They never realized it, it really takes so long. I mean, they thought it was a matter of a week, two weeks at, at max. Uh, but when we saw the data, it was taking a couple of months in certain cases. And we realized through process mining that what, what was happening is the interaction between multiple departments. One was an implementation team, one was an operations team. Uh, there was a lot of looping that was going on. There were documents being transferred from implementation to operations that were returned back to implementation because they were not accurate, because they were not sufficient. Uh, and it was just a matter of understanding that, you know, you can just adjust certain things. You can make sure the first, you, you get it first time right, and that would save uh, the cycle time by a couple of weeks, right? Then, uh, just by that little tweak. But those things are not visible. Those things become visible only when it is, you know, really surfaced in the right manner. And that's what the automation and that's what the data behind it uh, does for you. So these are the kind of guarantee we were able to guarantee that we'll we'll reduce the lead time by two weeks uh, on an average for your service onboarding because we could see that once we automate this one part and make sure we get it right the first time. The data is telling you that the lead time is going to be saved by two weeks, right? So that's the kind of guaranteed outcome because you know, and the tooling now is actually mature enough uh, to tell you, to simulate that. You know, it can tell you that if you automate this activity, the lead time reduces by, by, uh, by three weeks. Uh, and if you put some cost attributes, it will tell you that you're going to have 
the process cost on an average reduced by $10,000, right? So the tooling is now much more reward and it'll, it will actually tell you what the guaranteed outcomes are like. That's excellent. So, you know, process mining, obviously, you've talked a little bit about giving you an opportunity to identify spots for automation and to cut costs. What other sort of objectives are people um, searching for when they, when they execute a process mining um, project? I mean, they're looking for, um, you know, one, um, a lot of rework that is happening in, uh, in the systems. You know, people are just doing things over and over again because uh, you will see in, in the mining activity that there is, there is looping happening. You know, people go uh, from point A to point B and back to point A uh, because things were not done right. Right, so that there's a lot of rework. There is a lot of uh, mundane stuff that is going on. You know, people are looking for activities that uh, people are doing data entry multiple times. Uh, for, you know, why should somebody be just sitting there and doing data entry from one system to the other? All of those things will come out because people see that this activity is taking a lot of time. Uh, it might be a bottleneck. You can do bottleneck analysis uh, from all of this data that is coming up. Uh, you can do a lot of root cause analysis um, uh, based on uh, this data, where exactly is the problem? Because sometimes the problem that surfaces itself some, might be something that might be obvious is not really right. Uh, there is a deeper root cause for it and it might be uh, a problem upstream. Uh, so those kind of analysis uh, can be done through this. Um, people can look at uh, overall cost saving. Uh, you know, if I, if I uh, cut down certain activities, um, am I saving cost uh, and how, what kind of cost? You know, exactly quantifiable uh, cost analysis can be done through this. They can see if uh, they have uh, very important, very expensive resources doing things that are not making such a big business impact, uh, right? So you might, have, you might think that uh, people are doing something very, very important, but when you analyze this, there might not be a lot of transactions that are impacting. Uh, so you might have people stuck in, uh, in roles that are not making as much business impact. Um, so all of those uh, those things can be, uh, and at the same time, it's just not historical analysis. You can actually, once you do this analysis, you can put it in your live system and start making an impact on your live SLAs. So you can get notifications and escalations uh, to forewarn you that you know you you might be missing an SLA, um, and you you can uh, you can correct yourself uh, in real time as well. Right. So so there are multiple uses. So what kind of business process areas are you seeing people use um, process mining with? Anything that has, uh, you know, a longer uh, duration is, uh, is, people, is something that people are looking at. So a lot of order to cash, procure to pay, a lot of things around revenue cycle management. Uh, so, you know, if you look at accounts payable, um, things like marketing to lead, uh, people look at that. I mean, anything that has a longer span it has multiple stakeholders involved. Uh, there are things being moved from, you know, one place to another, one department to another. A uh, lot of different variations that can come in. I mean, if you look at uh, order to cash, I mean, order can be placed in, you know, so many different ways, uh, and then it takes so many different paths. People, um, you know, it's uh, uh, it's very very cumbersome to understand exactly what is happening in a manual way. Uh, so to automate that, people see a lot of savings. People are. Uh, looking at you know 40 to 70 percent savings in certain cases uh, by understanding what is happening and standardizing those things. I mean that's one of the other things you know to standardize the business processes across different geographies. Uh, people might be doing things differently, uh, so standardization of uh, processes is a huge thing. One of the other things that I missed out was compliance. Uh, oh yeah, you know, that's a huge thing. Are you really adhering to uh, the policies uh, that you have set as an organization or Maybe some are externally imposed on you, uh, so it will clearly tell you are you are you in adherence with those policies. Um, so it it becomes a big thing in audits. Uh, you know, instead of doing the audits manually, you can look at the process mining data and see uh, if the process is working as designed. Um, so those are uh, you know, but you know anything that spans. I mean, you'll not see a whole lot of benefit if it is if you have a process that takes you know uh, half a day. Um, Obviously, the uh, the more the longer a thing takes, and more stakeholders that get involved, uh, the outcome and the benefits of process mining exercise is going to be more. You know, I had a client that recently went down a process mining path with us, and 
Um, their data science teams um, were working with it. Um, they were looking at customer journey and how to you know, understand how to build a better relationship with the client and how to, how to retain their customers. And it was interesting because they had, their data scientists had been working with models and they weren't coming up with anything really exciting and interesting and new. And with process mining, they actually were able to identify some additional data sources that they weren't really fully aware of in the process that is actually opening up the window for them to understand more of the relationship with their customers and, um, and you know, some of the indicators that should be included as part of their models. So I think there are so, so many areas that process mining can touch on. So yeah. and I, one of the things that I wanted us to go ahead and do was actually touch on some of what I call frequently asked questions. We've been in, we've been with customers and it seemed that we get a lot of the same questions over and over again. And I thought it would be helpful to this audience to have those, because um, I'm sure some of those same questions on their mind. So if you don't mind, can I go ahead and ask you a few? Sure. Okay. All right. So one, one question is, do you have to have process models already created to begin process mining? Do you have to have process models already created? Oh, it would beat the whole purpose of process mining if you have process <laughs> models. Right now. So no, no, you don't have to have... Uh, you don't have to have the whole picture, uh, otherwise, like you know, it's it's meaningless. But you need to have a starting point, right? You need to have a boundary of the process. You need to know what systems you're interacting with, uh, because there is a data prep phase. You need to know where you have to collect those digital footprints. So I would say that, and that's not the hard part. You know, people already know uh, what we call the level one process. They already know the happy path, and that's not the painstaking part. And uh, you know, I. I go back to the how I define and uh, how I'm defining this, which is an automation of the process discovery part itself. Um, and uh, the level one process is not the painstaking part of that uh, the process discovery exercise. It's the thousands of variations. It's the thousands of exceptions. What happens when we do this? What happens when we do that? That's what is taking time, and that's where the leakage is uh, in the in the in organizations and in operations. So. Um, so you don't have to have, that's where, you know, it's, it's giving you the value of painting the picture, giving you a full picture of what all different variations are, how many transactions are giving, going through those variations, doing a full path analysis of that. And that's the data that you can use for further analysis, but you have to have a starting point. You need to know who are the key stakeholders that are involved in that process. You need to know what systems they're interacting with and leave the rest of process mining to fill in the details. I look at it as, you know, uh, you just set the boundary and then it just does the work of painting with the right colors um, inside the canvas, right? So give it a canvas to paint on and it'll do the, do the rest. I had to laugh. You used the term leakage and something immediately, uh, an analogy popped into my mind. <laughs> um, I have a kitchen faucet that's um, been leaking. It's had a drip and a drip and a drip. And, um, you know, I wasn't with all the things going on in pandemic, I didn't couldn't get somebody in to fix it. And I thought, well, no big deal. It's just a drip here or there, a little bit of leakage here or there. And then I got my water bill <laughs> and the cost was, was tremendous. So I guess yeah. I could equate to the value of process mining to be able to identify those leakage points and be able to uh, stop them and that expensive drain. That's absolutely right. And you know, that's, I sometimes think that, you know, process when people say, you know, it's uh, uh, what is real applicability of process mining and what is it solving? And, and I think to myself, you know, it, it's, it's tough to kind of understand the importance because it's not a dramatic pain. You know, it's, it's not dramatic. It's like you said, it's a drip, right? It's not a pipe burst. So you, if there was a pipe burst, you will, you know, you call a plumber <laughs> and right away with a drip, it's okay. You know, there's a leakage. It will, you know, my, but when you see that water bill and I equate the water bill to, to somebody saying, Oh, you know what? I'm in financial services. Uh, I, when I, somebody asked me to open a new account, it takes me three weeks to open a new account. Oh boy, Capital One is able to do it in five, uh, five minutes and I'm just going by the ads that they have on, on TV. Uh, why am I taking three weeks? And that's, that's a kind of equivalent to the water bill. Why am I paying so much, right? And that's when they say, you know, figure out how can I do it in 10 minutes or how can I do it in five minutes as well? And that's when you start a whole process discovery uh, exercise of what's happening in your operations 
But if it's it's going to take eight months to a year to do that, and guess what? You're always going to play catch up. You're never going to be in par with your competition. But if it is going to take three weeks uh, and you are able to get some benefits very very quickly from it and guaranteed outcomes, then that's where those initiatives really make sense, and that's where it's transformational. Awesome. So um, two more questions for you, and then we'll have to go ahead and wrap up our time. So um, one of the things I've been asked about is, you know, when somebody is going down a process mining path, they decide to do it. Who are some of the different executive stakeholders that they need to involve as part of this type of project? So anybody who is, like I said, you know, it's uh, anybody in charge of process improvement. Uh, typically, there are uh, BPI teams, business process improvement teams uh, in organizations, especially in large organizations. And their responsibility is to make recommendations to the lines of business. Um, I see them as sort of the, the key people uh, in this kind of an initiative because today they are just going to the line of business with sort of an empty slate, right? And they're saying, oh, we think uh, if you make these kind of changes, it's going to really impact your outcomes. Uh, but there is, there's almost a trust gap right? I mean, why should the line of business that has been doing certain things a certain way, why should they, they take their recommendation, right? They're not backing it up with any kind of data. They're not backing it up with real, real use cases. Um, and uh, when you go in with, with things like a process mining tool, that shows I'm backing it up by data. And by the way, I'm backing it up by your data, not by some industry average, not somebody else's data. This is what we are seeing in your systems. And we can show you how by doing certain things differently, making certain tweaks or automating certain things, this is what the outcome is going to be. This is how it's going to impact your KPIs. That's where, you know, the light bulb just goes on. You know, that's where you see the glint in people's eyes that, wow, this is something real. So it's a, it's a very, very uh, effective way. So I, I would say BPI teams, it has to, it has to really be at least if not a driven, it has to have a buy-in of the executives, right? Because it is a new way of thinking and they have to know that it is the first step towards a true transformation in their operations. Um, I mean, we have seen so many different operational excellence initiatives fail uh, because you know they are not using the essential oil, which is data. They're just using opinions and biases. Um, and uh, this is a completely different way uh, of doing things in a very short, very cost-effective, very, very accurate way. Uh, and, you know, we just can't stress it enough. So this pandemic time period has really put a, a sense of urgency around cutting costs in many businesses. So what would you say is how quickly can an organization realize real results with a process mining project? I would say it's it's uh, it's a matter of weeks, not a matter of months. Uh, I mean, the discovery itself is a three to four week process, uh, and we have done that. I mean, we we did an enlarged financial organization. You know, they were looking at their process around feed zeros, and normally it would take you know maybe five to six months to just do the discovery, uh, and we were able to get that discovery done in two weeks, um, and it was obviously much more accurate because it was uh, you know real data behind it. Um, and even if it is much more complex than sometimes, you know, things can take a year, but it's it's not that proportionate increase if you're doing it auto, in an automated fashion, right? Because obviously there is some foundational time for data prep and stuff that is needed. So I would say the, the discovery itself is a three to four week exercise. And then whatever analysis uh, on, on top, maybe another week or so, because once you have the data uh, in the right format, the analysis is very, very quick. So I would say the whole thing to see value is a four to five week exercise. And then when you start implementing the recommendations, um, it's another few weeks because a lot of these recommendations are just tweaks to your process. If there's an automation opportunity, automation these days is a very, very quick exercise uh, with all the toolings that is available to us. So people can realize true value in a couple of months. This is hard value. I mean, I, we are not talking about you know, value on paper. Uh, we're talking about value in production. So a lot of processes have the automated piece with systems, but you also were often asked about people that, you know, the people side of this, right? What if there are human manual tasks that legitimately are part of a process? How do you factor that into um, what's going on with process mining? I mean, uh, 
if there are genuine things that only um, the SMEs can do, those will have to stay. Like, you know, automation is never 100% automation, right? So there are things that will stay in. I would say anything that is being done today, the mundane activities are probably 60 to 70% of uh, everybody's time, right? So those are the things that can be automated. But there is, there is another concept around task mining, right? There is also a concept around really trying to understand what the humans are, uh, are doing. So how they are interacting with the systems, how they are spending time on that screen, right? Are they, uh, are they going off taking a cup of coffee or they're actually working on the screen for, for a couple of hours before they, they submit something, before they uh, do something with the backend? as in, you know, put something in a database or in any other backend sources. That stuff, that interaction with the screen is not captured in a process mining tool. Process mining, like we said, you know, it's, it's collection of digital footprints and digital footprints are created once you interact with the backend sources. So what's happening on the screen is not captured, but there are ways and means through task mining, which is a separate set of toolings. And in most vendor, vendor products, those two, are, those two disciplines are combined. Uh, but that's a separate set that uh, looks at exactly how uh, the business users are interacting with the, with the screen. So you know exactly how much time you're going to save, right? So you're going to save half an hour of somebody's time because that's how much they are, um, they're interact, they're spending in interaction with the screen and the system itself. Uh, but those two things combined gives you a very, very powerful way of saying exactly how much to, uh, what are the benefits? How, you know, if you automate certain things, what benefit you're going to get? But one, one distinction I want to make is, you know, if you're just looking at task mining or just looking at an automation in isolation in a silo, the biggest, the largest business case you're going to create is around maybe moving out a headcount, right? Either eliminating or moving them to other more useful exercises. And that's not going to be a huge use case or a huge business case, no matter how you want to see it, because what are you going to say? 50, 60 grand, right? I mean, that's what you what you say by eliminating headcounts. But once you start looking at this, looking at automation or looking at any activity in the context of the larger process, it's a much larger business case because that activity could be a bottleneck. It could be a root cause for something much bigger that is happening in the organization, right? It, it could really be a million dollar business case doing the same thing, doing the exact same automation. But now you know that you are reducing the, the lead time, you're reducing the cycle time, eliminating wait times later on in the process. Maybe it's creating a lot of uh, problems from a quality perspective. So you get to get to really see, it makes it all visible. It, it surfaces all these problems um, by doing the process mining exercise. So automation, while it's a, it's a good thing, it has to be put in the context of the overall process to really get the value, to really see the business case around it. Not this has been excellent discussion today. Thank you again for, for joining us. I think it's time to go ahead and close out our session today. Audience, thank you for joining us and listening into this. If you are thinking about doing process mining and not really sure what your first project should be, Prolifix offers a discovery workshop. It's a no charge half day workshop where we can take you through and identify um, a good candidate for your first exercise and what you would take, what you would need to prepare. Thank you all for joining and have a great day.